The following is a presentation of TFNN. The P Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, David White. And welcome all to another excellent edition of the Power Trading Hour with me, your humble, lovable, squeezily soft host. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. So what do we have going on today? Well, it is options expiration. We're up uh, 16 and a half points on the S&P cash, 28.25 little better volume than we've had over the last two weeks, um, but it's starting to wane now. Uh, starting the day with, uh, or at least the show, with 4.5 billion shares. So we, we finally had at least a few of the diehard shorts uh, throw in the towel today, at least the way, way I'm looking at it. A lot of the uh, stocks are up on very light volume again today, uh, but... Uh, Everybody piling into the indexes makes it real easy to just drive the market up a little higher, a little higher. Uh, don't see any signal right now to pull the trigger short on the market. Uh, certainly have a lot of stocks. Again, uh, options roll over on Monday and Tuesday. Uh, generally, you have the next big trend in the market on Wednesday. As we talked earlier in the week, if your Wednesday's up on options expiration, you almost get uh, a pullback on Thursday and then a push uh, again uh, to the recent highs on that Friday. So we've got that kind of options uh, program uh, working out. There's just not that many in the whoa, many options out there. The option market makers have pulled back severely since. Um, I'm going to say late September as they continue to get their hands burnt in the market that went very um, much not the way that they had expected. Uh, this month, there just wasn't much in the way of options. Uh, futures were a lot easier to push the market around in, in the short term. Uh, but uh, we do finally have some vo volume today, but mostly it's in the ETFs and indexes not a lot in a lot of individual stocks. We'll take a look at a few of them. We had some earnings uh, really, you know, it's next week, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. We have a little bit more of them. So we'll look at that today. Um, but that's kind of it. Um, do finally have a little bit of volume uh, after not having any, way, any, and re any real energy on the way up. Uh, the question is whether or not this is, uh, the equivalent of a blow-off top in a light volume market. 825 on the S&P cash. The Dow's up 163. The Nasdaq's up 74. The Russell's up 12. Uh, and uh, for all the bad news that everybody's raining down, market seems to be just kind of plowing along. Like old man river, he don't care if it's sunny. He just keeps rolling along. Anyway. Uh, enough of my singing. Let's do a little history. And it's all just a little bit of history repeating. It is history repeating. And on this day, in 44 BC, Julius Caesar, the dictator for life of the Roman Empire, is murdered by his own senators at a meeting in a hall next to Pompey's Theater. The conspiracy against Caesar encompasses as many as 60 noblemen, including Caesar's own protege, Marcus Brutus. And uh, eh, you got to say, maybe Caesar wasn't the best guy in the world, but uh, all the people, all those senators around him and the noblemen, far, far worse. So you don't always get to pick a great leader, maybe a good leader. And then uh, hopefully you don't have a lot of people around you that are bad. Kind of makes you think about uh, the UK right now and Brexit. That uh, everybody said what they want to do. Everybody's going to fight it. I wonder if uh, May goes into the gallery one time 
And they all attack her. But uh, you never know. I think it's kind of close, isn't it split? Kind of almost split. Not that many more people for it than against it, at least in in their House of Parliament. But uh, it is a little weird. Uh, I don't see 98 Microsoft anytime soon, 117 now. Um, so I see 108, 110 on the pullback. Well, I'd have to take a look at the chart. I still think you're going to get that. I don't know when it is. Um, they just keep doing everything so perfectly. It is a problem um, in this. Now, what I dislike today, uh, and you, you, like I said, this is going to be Monday's show. I'm going to probably devote to all the stocks that blew through highs today on no juice. Uh, on Microsoft, you were looking for 71 million shares from the October 3rd high. Uh, today, you're breaking through that on 27.8 million shares. So there just isn't that much uh, in the way of push up here. I still think you're going to see 98. Now, the question is, do you want to make some trades in between there? I don't really. I think that the only safe place to enter this stock now is about 98. And yes, I do think it's going to get back there. Um, and it may not be because anything bad at Microsoft. It may just be because all the mounting pro uh, uh, problems with everybody in that sector. Uh, I'm going to talk to Tom O'Brien about Facebook uh, in the bottom of next hour. And I mean, there's some really bad juju going on in that sector uh, from Amazon to Google. Uh, and others, um, these people got a multitude of sins. A um, couple of companies have tried to keep themselves out of the press, and uh, Microsoft is one of those, but I don't have any problem thinking that this thing could have a 10% retracement, and certainly if the volume doesn't change by the end of the day, you're going to break through a previous high on maybe 50% of the volume. So that's it. Uh, and the question about CRM. Do I have time? Yes. We'll take a quick look at CRM. Do, 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 do. Same kind of thing. Um, it had the volume and instantly rolled over as it broke through new highs. Uh, this is actually looking more like a short uh, than anything else. Um, like a lot of these stocks, uh, the next... Uh, close below a nine day moving average should be some uh, fairly decent destruction in the market. Now, if you don't get that, that's fine. And I, I, I don't want to anticipate so much as wait for these closes, but almost uh, there's just literally a ton of these stocks that are set up uh, and could see uh, some very bearish scenarios. Salesforce to me looks a lot more like uh, what, uh, what's the guy's name? market clues. He called it a uh, lenticular or a contact uh, that just looks like a big dome. And Salesforce looks like that. It looks like this big dome, like a dome and set itself back down to about 132 uh, in the market. Anyway, I shall return after the short timeout. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, 
the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS Order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call, call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. And as we come back, I wanted to look at a few stocks. Um, ACWV, which is uh, iShares, um, what's the? actually get the ETF info on this one. Uh, move that over here. Minimum volatility index. Um, I don't know if this says a lot. I don't know a lot about it, but I did notice how this came up on very light energy and now is back up. And uh, basically it's just set up for low volatility in the market. And it's been doing nothing but going up since that December 6th low uh, would kind of give you an idea that maybe there's some kind of uh, very low volatility market coming in the front. Uh, quick question in the emails about gold and uh, any comments I have about that. And uh, I think the one comment I have is that it certainly looks like gold is the place uh, over at least the last few weekends that investors want to park their cash in until Monday, in case something horrible happens. A lot of times it's crude. Uh, now it kind of it looks like it's shifting to uh, gold over the f last few weekends. So uh, a pump today would be very interesting, especially if you don't get any pullback on Monday for gold. That would tell you a lot. If you just pull, if it does pull back on gold on Monday, and we find out that they just parked a lot of cash in gold over the weekend. That also tells you something a lot more. I don't know uh, that you can read anything more into that until Monday. Uh, to, to, to what else do we have? We've got a bunch of stocks. BOE. Eh, not a huge volume stock. Uh, beneficial interest. Uh, what is this here? This is the Enhanced Global Dividend Trust, the BOE. Um, you actually have some volume up here in dividends, which makes you think that people are kind of moving over here. What you don't have is any energy, again, off that December 24th low. Don't know if you can make a great deal off of that. Biotime, a little biotech company, um, went into $1.65 on January 29th with 10 million shares. 
Hit that with 1.5 million shares yesterday. A little bit of a pullback today so far. I don't know if there's a great deal to be read into that one. Uh, cars. Uh, okay. And this is just back into the and just close this gap. Energy is more. Kind of going sideways here. It looks like you're getting ready for energy to go back to the December 24th low. CSAS, CASA, excuse me. Nothing new in that one. CDW. This is a company, we probably don't talk much about it. Uh, they supply a lot of computer components and parts uh, to uh, business. Uh, this one had a 2 million share high on December 4th. That was $96.75. Uh, you got into it today with 191,000 shares. You had 800,000 shares two days ago. But again, up to these highs, not a lot of juice. Uh, this one is about, uh, I'm going to say 15, 18% off on the energy way on the way back high. Higher, I guess I have to say it. Um, Chesapeake Energy just bouncing around that high. Uh, don't see anything in Cigna. Uh, Columbia Bank. Um, kind of wondering if there is in Columbia a lot of juice to be had uh, as uh, Venezuela continues circling the drain. Uh, don't see any quick resolution to what's happening in Venezuela. Maybe but you always have to worry about it coming over the weekend. Uh, you certainly have a light volume test of the $50.70 high of the April 11th, 2018 high in uh, this bank from uh, south of the border. Um, so far today, you're in it with 532,000 shares. COG, uh, Cabot Oil and Gas, we were looking at this one. Um, go a little slower here. Um, back into this reversal day of November 20, excuse me, November 14th, that had 12.5 uh, million shares. Going into it yesterday, you had a little doji in about 4 million shares, and then back in this range. We certainly are setting up uh, and tapping at the higher highs, but again, too many of these stocks just not having any juice. Probably Microsoft is the one that would concern us the most in this market. Uh, Costco against a 4 million share high uh, on December 6th, came in with uh, 2.4 million shares a couple of days ago. Still hanging around here, but 1.6 million shares, not a lot of juice. CRF, which is a corner return ETF, just going sideways. CSX, we talked about this one, hanging at highs, but also not a lot of juice. Uh, you're looking for something breaking the $93, excuse me, $73.90 high. That's the December 3rd high. Uh, with 8.5 million shares, you got into it with 4.7 million shares. Uh, yesterday, 4.2 million shares. Uh, today, you got 4.7 million shares and a doji. And again, what you're watching for in a lot of these right now, uh, overall, is any close below the next nine-day moving average. Um, basically sets up some fairly decent reversals in the market. Uh, to, to, to Carnival, and yeah, just uh, a lot of these, just setting that same thing up. Um, again, uh, you had a bunch of days above and below the nine-day moving average. The next close below that on Carnival uh, PLC, the CUK. Not the cruise ship. Uh, that would be a sell back down to probably about 51 bucks. To do to, to, what else do we have? Uh, let's take a quick look at Eric. Haven't looked at uh, Ericsson for a while. Of course, probably the big supplier for Europe and Asia for 5G. This thing did gap higher, I think a little bit on Avago. Some of the other stuff, you were looking for about 20 million shares. You got about 2.4 million shares so far today. Nokia is the other one in that space. 
and yeah, it gapped up too. Nokia has always been the better looking one of the two, although I think Ericsson has more room to run. Uh, you're back up into this gap down that came down with 71 million shares. You're into it with 17 million shares today. So you got to watch these very carefully now uh, as these are acting uh, scary. You might get uh, $5.45 or $6.45, uh, maybe $6.50 out of Nokia. But man, is that that continues like it is. A lot of these stocks are set up for the next turn down to be rather vicious. If you don't get that turn down, then that's fine. But uh, man, that could turn. We'll be back in a minute. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Hi folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And as we come back from the break, we're going to look at a few more stocks. One of the companies that uh, I got asked about here was First Solar. And whether this is a short or not, um, well, you certainly tested the previous high with a whole lot less volume. Um, so you've got that. Um, Energy actually had a little bit of it off this March uh, 8th low, but it looked to me like short covering. You went from eight days to cover to four days to cover, which is still a lot, but not beyond the scope of uh, pulling the trigger on this. Uh, but uh, 
I suspect a lot about what uh, is going on here is uh, subsidies uh, to sell their products in the United States, and those are problematic at best. And uh, just um, eh, kind of what you were thinking about already, which is that, um, you know, a lot of these projects had a lot of pie in the sky. You know, there are people who are still doing it. Uh, but certainly the solar panels aren't getting any better. The technology around it's not getting any better. And the pricing isn't dropping. Uh, so, you know, we're going to have to have some kind of uh, big storage uh, battery kind of device that becomes uh, economical for power uh, production, not uh, lithium-ion batteries. Uh, I mean, they're bad enough in a car, but once you scale them to the level of a big house or something else, it becomes much more problematic. But, uh, yeah, I mean, we got kind of the signal. Uh, confirmation would be a close below a three-day displaced moving average or a nine-by-nine. Nine. Let's go ahead and look at it uh, as the displaced. Um, I use the displaced for actually pulling mine. So, yeah, anything below a... Uh, $54.50 uh, close in the next couple of days uh, would be the trigger to go ahead and pull uh, that one short. Uh, to, to do what else do we have on my list of stuff? Let's uh, go ahead and do this, which is um, we were kind of going ahead and starting to look at stocks uh, that are coming up on earnings. So let's go ahead and do that. And we did that a little bit yesterday. Let me move this one over and close this. Get a little bit going on here. You can give me a call, by the way, at 877-927-6648. Okay. Right. We've got to get a Friday. And didn't have much in the way today. That's the March 15th. Uh, Lumber Liquidators is Monday morning. Let's take a quick look at that. I don't know if there's anything in it. Certainly, that $10 range is going to act kind of as a support. Kind of went through that, and you're at it right now. I don't see how the risk you can set up any decent risk reward for Monday. Certainly wouldn't be short a $10 stock. That would be it. Uh, Overstock.com also Monday morning. Uh, when we get into money uh, Monday afternoon, uh, for those guys in the high times, you've got uh, t, -t, t L R Y. Um, of course, this thing blew apart from 300 bucks that one day to to nothing. Um, you know what? You actually. Are this thing actually starting to look a little better. I don't think I would be short this thing uh, as bad as it is going into earnings. In fact, it does have kind of a decent bias. Um, wouldn't buy it, but man, if I was short this thing, I certainly would be out because this is not a bad looking chart set up for next week, and that's uh, next Tuesday. What else do we have out here for earnings coming up? Uh, to uh, Tuesday morning, we go to Designer Shoe Warehouse. This one did fairly well, if I remember right, on the last earnings call um, and started moving up. You're kind of coming back down a bit into the support area. 2274 would be support. And too much energy on the way down. I don't know. Just retail getting a fairly big, broad brush uh, that's problematic. Uh, for a stock that I wouldn't trade, uh, but I do look at as kind of a canary in the coal mine for what's going on in business is Steelcase. They sell a lot of furniture and file systems, that kind of stuff. And you know what? doesn't look that bad, but it doesn't look that good. You're right. Here at the previous high, tested it with 
300,000 shares lighter. That's a November 2nd high compared to February 22nd high, but you're just hanging out here waiting for earnings on Tuesday morning in Steelcase. Let's see. Oh, man. This is a blast for the past. I haven't looked at this one for a long time. I remember everybody used to call in on this one. This was uh, Westport Innovations. They were going to turn all the pickups in America to uh, running on propane. Never ended up being anything because it was like eight grand. And it would take you like 10 years to pay that back compared to gasoline. Unless you're indoors or something and need to pin, uh, pick up in some kind of giant uh, warehouse. I never understood the whole idea of spending eight grand to convert to natural gas. Maybe it made some sense at one time. Was natural gas ever free? Maybe, maybe if you're just burning it off out there in the uh, northwest, if you're just flaring natural gas, maybe you save some of it and use it for your truck. Maybe it's worth the eight grand then to convert it. Um, this thing's just going sideways. I don't see anything new on it. T -t 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 uh, Franco Nevada, Tuesday night, FNV. I don't know if these companies really move that much on earnings. Certainly holding up fairly well into it. Uh, to today, you did get into kind of a lighter, let's see here, lighter move. I don't know if there's anything to be made about that. Eh, gap down, but uh, not doing much. Okay, let's get into Wednesday. Uh, this is the one that I'm looking at, which is Wednesday more, no, Wednesday after the bell, which is Micron. We talked a little bit about this. It uh, doesn't really seem to change a lot uh, about uh, their future. Uh, we've got NVIDIA, which I will talk with uh, Tom about tonight, about their new purchaser, purchase of Mellanox. Uh, but uh, you've got yeah, just not a whole lot of juice in this. It certainly looks like any downturn in the market um, would bring this probably back down in and below 35 bucks. You've got some, I think, fairly decent support right there. But you do need this thing kind of to pull back to about 35. And maybe there might be something there on Micron. Anyway, we'll be back in a minute. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors.
Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. And there are not a lot of stocks that look good after they've come off highs. The Green Buyer Company's GBX makes railroad cars, freight cars and that kind of equipment, uh, North America, Europe, South America, uh, wheel repair parts and all that kind of stuff. Um, maybe the best looking chart out here for trying to buy the lows. Uh, your previous low came out here at $37.44. December 24th, 842,000 shares. Came into about 318,000 shares yesterday. Got just a little tick out here. What you want is a close above uh, 37.44. Uh, Looks like you're probably going to get that. Actually, and you could make a case that the, that the uh, expenditures for the rail companies will make them go lower. Why, of course, uh, the spending would make Greenbrier go higher. Uh, but when you're looking for a long-term low in a stock, you might get some consolidation, but uh, basically the, the patterns on this probably don't get any better uh, than this, and you're off uh, almost 50% off the highs. Uh, again, the question is whether or not you have a little bit more in the way of uh, consolidation. But uh, I think your risk-reward one of the better setups in the market right now. Uh, General Mills and uh, his uh, friend, uh, Kentucky Fried Chicken, uh, is the colonel, uh, back up into this gap down that goes back to May 20th of 2018, actually April, March 20th, 2018. We'll get it right eventually. 6.4 million shares back into it with 5 million shares. And you actually did test it uh, on 8 million shares on September 18th. So you're back up to this level. Um, and again, these kind of companies, when the markets start to roll, these are the safety stocks. So as these go ahead and start breaking through recent resistance, you want to keep an eye on them. I don't know if you want to trade them, but they do tell you that the big guys, uh, when the volume comes in, back into those stocks, are looking for some place to hide their cash. And again, the big funds, they have to be invested. And um, it's no different for any of these funds. Uh, the money managers will hedge the other side of it, even if they lose money. Their job is to lose the least amount of money, and that's why they'll go to something like uh, cereal companies. High Point Resources. Uh, to, to, what about what is going on with this stock? Quick look. Uh, engages in the exploration, development, and production of oil, natural gas, and natural gas liquids. Certainly the kind of consolidation I talk about. I would like to have seen some lighter volume. And you're still in that three, you know, you got about three days out here of lighter volume. Also would have liked to have seen lighter energy off this February 22nd high. Uh, but again, you need uh, a test of the 206 on lighter volume, but this doesn't, you know, there's a whole lot of other stocks that haven't consolidated quite this much. But yeah, a, a close, or a push below 
206 and then the next close above it. If you had something like a million, million and a half shares, uh, would interest me. IYF, we've talked about this one a few times, uh, is trying to break through the December 3rd high. That was 120.59. You had 642,000 shares. Today, you're up up that top in the IYF of 171,000 shares. So you've got to be extremely light. This one is actually uh, even more bearish uh, than the charts would have been around 2007. So I don't know what else is going on out here, but man, in the financial sector, you've got literally nothing. Uh, it is rare to find an ETF that my power vector indicator shows that the energy has dropped in half. But this one, it's dropped 40%. Uh, it's fairly, maybe 45%, because that's a little logarithmic, 1.9 on the way down, 1.2 on the way up. And then, of course, uh, the real challenge out here is this light volume of 171,000 shares today compared to 642,000 shares. So you really have to keep an eye. Uh, General uh, Mills got in a fight with General Motors uh, and uh, both the generals from the north and the south. It's well known in the in history classes, uh, but uh, you never know. Uh, let's check my email. I think got some other ones coming in. Yeah, someone wants me to look at IBM, so I guess we can do that. We have time. Yeah, got plenty of time. To, to, to IBM, we talked about this a few days ago. I wonder if this is the same person uh, always uh, coming back in here. Uh, I see what they're looking at here. Um, yes. Question is whether or not this is a short setup. The answer is yes. Uh, again, like almost all of these stocks, uh, the next close below a nine-day moving average or a three-by-three three displaced moving average would be a uh, confirmation of that pattern. Um, you only need to go down about a buck or so for IBM to bust through this. In fact, uh, 138.60, 138.70. Um, and again, you got that Monday. But man, you know, you, you're basically going into this big gap down uh, that can, goes back to October 17th of 2018 with uh, almost 20 million shares. Got into it with less than 4 million shares on February 26th. You're back up again with uh, 2.7 million shares so far today. You might, if you're lucky, get to 3.5 million shares. There just isn't any juice. And man, it's gonna be two or three years before quantum computers actually start paying off. Nothing else has for them. Uh, maybe they can make the books look a little bit better by buying Red Hat, but man, it's still a very tough um, road for IBM in the next, I'm going to say a couple of years. Uh, NVIDIA, we'll talk to Tom O'Brien about them buying uh, a company this week. Uh, NVIDIA, the gap down uh, occurs on to, to, to November 16th with uh, 49 million shares. Again, you're just back up into these heavy resistance areas. Again, with very light volume today, 11.8. 7 million shares. Uh, earlier on December 3rd, you had 22 million shares. But again, you're going against 49 million shares, and there is a lot. And uh, NVIDIA is not going to have much in the way of a good quarter, probably until they get rid of a lot of the uh, issues that they have with uh, memory that they've still got to sell. They bought an entire huge run thinking the party would ever never end. Uh, most of the other chips, they didn't buy that many on, but they got a really good deal from Micron uh, and some of the other memory companies on VRAM, and they're gonna. It's gonna be a while why they uh, why they work that off. I'm thinking maybe midsummer into summer, Nvidia could do well. Uh, we're going to break. I shall return for the last segment, then I will re re return. At 3.30 with Tom O'Brien.
I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of of TFNN. Also, a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. And uh, as I finish up the show, I wanted to get to one thing. Um, let's take a look at Nike. Um, but I did hear something I wanted to replay for the show. Um, Nike uh, earnings next week, uh, hanging at previous highs, didn't have a sign of strength uh, through the uh, September 21st high of 85.82, uh, got to 87.99 with, uh, eh, what, about 5 million, 6 million shares less than that previous high. Pull back, now you're back up, volume's about the same. Uh, you are closing above that September 21st high. Um, energy wasn't all that bad, uh, so you're just going to hang around for the earnings out here. Uh, the question is whether or not there's anything left in the can. And, of course, disappointing results from some of the sneaker companies, uh, the mall sneaker companies, haven't really hit Nike yet. I'm just wondering, a lot of those stores are closing, and whether they did a lot of business or some business, you think it's got to hit it or hurt it a little bit. Um, I was uh, looking for some stuff over the over uh, last weekend, and I had this. I wanted to uh, actually play it this week, uh, and this is a short clip from 
Jim Chinos. Kind of tied to something I've seen you talk about in the past about this idea that if you're in some way changing the world, if your idea of your company is having a an impact, a transformative impact, then right. you're kind of forgiven many things. In Silicon Valley 2.0, there's a sense that if you will are changing the world or believe you are changing the world, it's okay to lie to investors. And I just don't buy that. I think that that corrupts the marketplace. And I think ultimately it leads to bad things for investors and for returns and for confidence. Well, I think it does too. He kind of told it the best way possible. I wouldn't have been that uh, diplomatic about it. But yeah, if you're, if you're espousing the right views, it's okay to lie to investors. We'll talk about that later. In the meantime, sell when you can, not when you have to. We will see you at 3.30 with Tom O'Brien for the Tech Insider Half Hour.